Review time. This is a Philips light bulb that was just released. It has an interesting uh, bit of text here. It says warm glow. And if you flip it over, there's, uh, I'll just instead of the larger picture, uh, it states that uh, the bulb can be dim from uh, 2700 Kelvin down to 2200 Kelvin. Uh, basically, it can become warmer as it gets dimmed. And that's quite unusual. That's not a normal behavior of a white LED. So something cool is going on inside this bulb. Okay, well the bulb's on and I've turned my white balance of my camera off so it'll uh, not try to automatically compensate if the bulb is uh, changing color as I dim it down. And uh, as you can tell actually when it gets to a lower color all of a sudden things start looking quite yellow which of course is a characteristic of a low Kelvin bulb. A very warm light and very cheerful light uh, effect when that uh, occurs. So. Uh, yes, there seems to be some truth that this bulb is changing color as you dim it, which is really interesting. Okay, uh, I've removed the top of the bulb, of course, and uh, here's the uh, emitters, and there's a little acrylic uh, diffuser that uh, obviously directs the light. That's not the exciting bit, although I haven't seen anything quite like that before. Uh, the really interesting bit's going on in the uh, circuit board below the uh, diffuser here. And uh, it actually has an interesting way of achieving two color temperatures. And uh, let's take a zoom in on that and see how that is done. Okay, the bulb's turned on and it's this lowest setting. You see the bulb uh, light is quite yellow. It's a uh, low Kelvin. And here's an LED that's glowing. And if you watch carefully as I turn the bulb up to a higher brightness, another LED over here starts to turn on. It actually has a higher Kelvin temperature. And the LED that was providing the yellow light stops glowing entirely. So basically there's two entire different sets of emitters in this bulb. When the bulb's fully on, uh, the whiter emitters, and then as the bulb is uh, dimmed down in uh, temperature, uh, it uh, creates uh, this effect where the light gets more yellow. So uh, that is a, a rather clever solution, because uh, LEDs, of course, only produce one kind of light, uh, which is determined by the phosphor. So they get around that by essentially uh, uh, duplicating the emitters. Okay, looking straight down at the bulb, I've removed that little clear bit of plastic. You can now clearly see there's two kinds of emitters, the larger ones here, I presume at 2700 Kelvin, and these little smaller ones here, probably at the 2200 Kelvin, and uh, they basically turn on depending on how dim the bulb is. A nice other thing about the bulb is actually I'm using a, a non-LED approved dimmer, something that uh, preceded LED bulbs, and it's working just fine. So. Uh, it looks like the bulb's really tolerant to uh, older style dimmers, which is nice. And uh, I'm just turning it on and off. You can sort of see it now oscillating between the two uh, two colors as I increase and decrease the intensity. So, uh, yeah, this is very clever. This is uh, this is quite neat. So all sorts of new and uh, marvelous things in this bulb. Uh, this is of course a thermal conductive paste, but it looks like it's also an epoxy. So. They actually just glued the emitter down onto this uh, bit of metal. Uh, until this date, I've only seen these screwed down. So here again is another innovation on Phillips' part. Okay, going a bit further, it looks like they press fit this uh, metal cap. And then below that, of course, is an AC to DC converter. Looks like a little bit of glue holding the board in place. But uh, there's no potting compound surrounding the entire assembly, of course. Uh, plastic on the outside. And it looks like it's a metal uh, interior. So. Let's, uh, let's extract that circuit board and take a look at it. Okay, well obviously the circuit board. Uh, let's see if we can find anything interesting out. Uh, the first thing is it's single-sided, uh, and that of course re results in a relatively weak solder joint. So for example, this is a transistor, and you can see when I, I wobble it, uh, it's already loose. I, I probably broke the solder joint when I was wrenching the board out of its base, but uh, it's a good example of what happens with single-sided assemblies. The only bulb I ever had fail in me actually in service was a Phillips bulb and it uh, had the same single-sided construction. Uh, I think this is a fairly weak solder joint as a result from it. Of course you save money. Uh, that's the other theme here uh, with Phillips lately it seems. Uh, this is a 105 degree centigrade rated capacitor uh, which is a, uh, a little lower than it used to be. Um, some interesting text here if you're into uh, industrial archaeology and trying to figure out whether or not a company is successful with their products. Uh, there's a date on this assembly. It looks like it's done a variable text uh, telling me when the bulb was designed, October 27th. And then there's a variable printing here of work week 47. And uh, that's interesting. I'm tearing this down very early in March. So that means it's a relatively fast sell through uh, about three and a half months. Uh, that's pretty good actually, uh, from all the way from a factory in China into my hands. 
So um, it's a good sign that this material is moving through fairly quickly. Um, let's see, what else can one see that's of interest? Uh, that's about it. Um, oh, uh, other than, of course, there's no integrated circuit yet again. It's all a collection of discrete transistors, uh, capacitors. So um, Philips lately has been walking away from uh, integrated controllers and going to this real simple placement of uh, a very inexpensive component. So very interesting. So very cool. Ah, one last note, I just realized. Uh, there's a little table down here, and uh, it basically has been marked out. It says 2700 Kelvin and 5000 Kelvin. It looks like there's even a selective laser marking going on, uh, telling them how this one was built. It's really quite interesting. Uh, you could, It looks like they could, uh, or were thinking of doing a 5000 Kelvin uh, with some 2700 at the backup. That would give a real tunable bulb with a, a really wide uh, range of colors. So much more modest this bulb, with 2700 to 2200 Kelvin. I wonder if they're going to try a wider range one as well. Uh, that could be a really interesting product. So, very neat. Okay, well that was the Philips Warm Glow Bulb. Uh, truly innovative. Uh, that's a real neat bit of uh, ideas running a couple of different emitters and uh, achieving then the control circuitry also with a very modest number of components. So, very neat. Very clever.